background noise. All right, welcome everybody uh, to our Six Figure Mastermind. Thank you guys for showing up. First of all, give yourselves a round of applause. You beat 85% of everybody else just because you showed up. So many people just don't even show up. So give yourselves a round of applause. I didn't see anybody giving themselves a round of applause. Let's try that again. Give yourselves a round of applause. Come on, Denise, bring it. You got this. Oh, all right. Amy knows how to do a round of applause. The proper way is to do a round of applause. All right, cool. Well, we are feeling fresh, exfoliated, and ready to rock today, guys. All right. Um, so we brought two powerhouses into our call today, Lauren Robin and Amber Rainsbury. Um, these are solid, solid six-figure earners in Modair. And, you know, who better to train on six figures than people who have done it? Um, one person, uh, my really, really good friend, uh, Lauren Robin, was the very first person in our former company to hit the top rank. She did it in six months. Boom, hit the top rank. She was a former realtor a very successful realtor she won a lot of awards in south florida um and she literally um just made a decision one day that like she went over to barbara heilman's living room saw a presentation and just said you know what i'm gonna make a decision she met with um she got to meet with ozma out in new york got to got to um you know feel the 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 you know the spirit of our company um, and, and Ozma and this product. And she saw the potential right out of the gate. In fact, she even joined the company before she had even tried liquid biocell. Imagine that. That's the posture that Lauren Robin had. She was like, I'm all in. And she's such a great example of going all in because not only did she build an incredible business um, and has made at this point millions of dollars with liquid biocell and her teams, but she designed a life for herself. Um, she has two twin boys that proudly served um, our country in the armed forces. And one of the things that I love about Lauren is she has taken total control and ownership of her life over the last decade. And Modere allowed her to do that. Um, and it's so inspiring. So I wanted to bring her on to, to kick us off um, with, you know, this, this mastermind. So the way this is going to work today, guys is we've got seven really, really things. We're, we're not holding anything back. I told everybody, like, <clears throat> let's give it to them straight. This is not like a rah-rah. We're not going to be walking on hot coals. Um, no one's going to have to do hot yoga. Like, what we're going to do is we're going to give you the real deal, right? Lila's like, I'm down for hot yoga. Let's go. We're going to give it, Mark. Mark's like, dude, you said my word, man. Let's go, Rachel. They're already doing a yoga camp right now as we speak uh, while we're doing the training. But listen, guys, um, we're going to give it to you straight. And there's going to be a lot of information. We're going to move pretty quickly. But what I thought is, if I'm truly serious, if, if you're truly serious about earning six figures, right, there's never a guarantee of income. But if you're truly serious, why can't we just give you everything right here, like the Cliff Notes version of everything, so that you can kind of assess hey where where should i where should i look for when i'm when i'm doing my personal development when i'm building my skills you need pretty much all of these seven kind of things to really master the art of leading a team and building a team and building a six figure income which by the way you can build a six figure income modere without even having a single team did you know that so there's different ways to build rome there's different ways to get to that income level with our company. And so I wanted to bring in um, Lauren and of course, Amber Rainsbury, who will give her a proper introduction, but um, she has been a solid elite six-figure income earner. She's a platinum black one. Um, and she's the first person that said yes to us in our business. She was our first breakthrough and she stuck around through thick and thin ups and downs, the company figuring out what they're doing didn't have a website, you know, didn't have social media. Like she stayed, she had the vision big enough to stay through all the ups and downs when she could have gone left, she could have gone right. And so there's two no better people than what we have right now. So um, the seven topics that we're going to go through today, um, and, you know, I don't know if, if um, Amber, if you happen to have those seven topics in front of you, uh, my printer wasn't working and I know I emailed it, but would you be able to just tell everybody what we're going to be talking about 
and then we'll have Lauren just totally kick it off. I have it right in front of me, actually. <laughs> I'm sending out a project broadcast to the team. So, um, yeah, so guys, the agenda is really awesome today, power packed. And so our first topic is going to be the entre entrepreneur mindset, you know, being bulletproof from negativity, failure, drama, gossip, comparison, and um, talking a bit about solutions, positivity, and work ethic. Number two, we're going to talk about heart-centered leadership, so leading from the front, showing the way, uplifting others, encouraging, recognition, team building. Number three, we're going to talk about uh, making an impression with social media and branding, you know, your, how to set up your profile, your mission statement, growing your friends, um, staying consistent, how to build relationships, and four, prospecting with purpose, so learning really how to prospect effectively, follow up, follow a DMO get referrals, tap root with team members using the right words. Number five is using the tools. So learning all of the great tools we have to grow our business, um, teaching other the tools, the systems, um, using social media, the company calls and trainings. And number six, presenting with posture, learning how to tell stories, do lives, reels, you know, speaking with confidence, how to put yourself out there and stay consistent, topics that engage people, um, solving problems rather than telling facts. And number seven, uh, the missing link, Darren Hardy calls it that X factor, you know, understanding your why and why will you be here from a year from now? And what, you know, what will you do what it takes and the next steps? And then we have some special announcements super secret insider stuff and it's gonna be very exciting you don't want to miss that and cash prizes so really uh stay on the whole two hours and it'll be worth it i promise all right guys so look at this is not an exercise in how well you can take notes this is an exercise where you're looking for that one nugget that one thing that's been maybe holding you back or limiting your success or limiting your belief and it doesn't matter whether it comes from lauren or myself or amber you're here today to just take it in be all in and tag your team members in this and let's take it away. By the way, at the end, as you have questions, as if you want a group collective mastermind, we're going to try to save a little time at the end to have a mastermind for anybody that wants some one-on-one -on -one attention here. Um, and so with that, I already did her introduction. I'm so excited for Lauren Robin to talk about the entrepreneur mindset and heart-centered leadership, two of the most important things to have a six-figure online business. Lauren Robin, <laughs> take it away. Let's give it up. Let's give it hey up guys, for Lauren. Good morning. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. It's so good to be here today. And I want to just say thank you to everyone who has contributed to all of these calls, the social retail presenters, the, the Mindset Monday calls. The, the Mindset Monday calls are so important and you guys, you know who you are, thank you so much for jumping on and being part of that because I believe, and I, I know David and Amber believe this to be true, that you can have all the skill set in the world. You, could have, you can know everything about everything, but if your mind, if your head is not on straight, you are definitely not going to be able to get to a six-figure in income. You'll, you won't do it. So today I'm going to talk about the entrepreneurial mindset, and I'm also going to roll right into heart-centered leadership because they really, they really go hand in hand. And the one thing that they have most in common is personal development. And personal development is, is really the, the, the key or the catalyst to your success. And if you're on this, if you're on this Zoom today, you want to promote yourself to a rank of most of you want to get to elite. Some people, not necessarily everybody, but most of you do. Most people want a six-figure income. Um, but even if you don't, just stay with us because whatever level you want to get to today, we're going to help you. And David talked a little bit about my story. Uh, one, one thing that was really unique about my story with network marketing was when I was selling real estate, I sold some really expensive homes to people that were in network marketing. And they were titans in the industry, like triple black diamonds and Amway. And these people really blew my mind away. They showed up for me as a person 
um, they showed up in such an amazing way. And they had this, they had these incredible lifestyles. They lived in these multi-million dollar homes and they had planes and boats and they were really family oriented and they were really philanthropic. And, you know, I was selling real estate, I was making a lot of money. I didn't want to get into network marketing at the time, but I was like, man, those people have an amazing life. And maybe someday I'm going to do that. And that someday happened in 2000 in eight, nine, and 10, when the real estate market crashed in South Florida. And even though I was really good at it, I just didn't want to do it anymore. I loved it until I, I didn't love it anymore. And so unlike most people that are network marketing, I started looking for a network marketing company. It wasn't like people were trying to recruit, recruit me. I was out there looking. And um, Barbara Hellman, which was also a, a very successful realtor in Palm Beach Gardens with me, we were looking together. And uh, her brother came across a company. Long story short, we looked at the patents, we looked at the clinical studies, and we were like, oh my God, this is the product that we can put our reputation behind because we had pretty big reputations in our businesses. And so I got on a call with Elaine Weiss and she got me on a call with Ozma. It was back when David's, David was actually, David's baby with Heston was like just born. And, and it was back in the day where it was just a couple of us. And I was fortunate enough, like David said, to be able to meet Ozma. I was living in Florida. Ozma was living in California. We had a chance meeting in New York City. I met her. And I was blown away. And if any of you have met Ozma, you know that she's very special. And that evening I was with her in her presence, I caught her vision. And I thought to myself, this is it, like this is meant to be. And I took a leap of faith and I started building my business before I even got the product. We call that launch before it lands. How many of you guys know what that means, right? Launch before it lands. I launched before it landed. And let me tell you something, I went gangbusters. I just had this feeling, my intu intuition was telling me this is the right place to be. And so I took a leap of faith and, you know, David, David was training us via Skype at the time. Um, he was showing pictures of his baby Heston, who was just born. And he was talking about the hyaluronic acid in this baby's face and his plump skin and everything. We didn't know anything about, it. we knew how to sell real estate. We didn't know how to even pronounce this stuff. But you know what? We believed. We believed in the mission. I believed in network marketing because I saw, not from what people were telling me, but I saw how these network marketing titans showed up for me. I saw their lifestyle. I saw all the good they were doing in the world. I saw how amazing they were. So when I made this decision, I was going to do whatever it took. And uh, there's, a, there's a great trainer, Ray Higgins, who, who a lot of you know, and he, used, he uses two words. He had a similar story like me. He was in real estate and, and he was, you know, when the, when the real estate market crashed, that's when I decided that I was going to jump into network marketing. So the two words, write these words down, until and despite. Because when you have these two words in your vocabulary, my, my phrase was, I decided that I was going to do whatever it took until I replace my real estate income, despite all the things I had working against me. Number one, I was broke because I, you know, the market crashed and I was two kids in college. And um, so I decided when I decided to go into network marketing, people literally were making fun of me. They're like, what the heck are you doing? My mother's friends who are all like, you gotta remember, I was this really high-end glamorous real estate agent. Now all of a sudden I'm selling collagen. And people are saying, this girl is crazy. She's selling vitamins out of the trunk of her car. Poor thing, poor thing. But you know what? I didn't listen to anybody because I was bulletproof. I made that decision. I was going to do this no matter what until I replaced my real estate income. So when I failed, when people told me no, I kept talking to more people. When I felt down and I felt like I was going to just be like, I couldn't go anymore, I started talking to more people. And I talked to everyone and I got to a point where I just didn't care what that looked like because my focus was on the vision that I saw with Ozma 
and the commitment that I made that I was going to do whatever it took. So I'm going to ask you guys right now, just write down what is it that, that you believe? Like I believed in Ozma, I believed in network marketing because I had proof. What do you believe? What is it that you believe in right now? No matter what, is it yourself? Is it, is it, how do you feel about network marketing? Do you have, do you have issues with it? You know, think about what your belief system is. And so, you know, I was obsessed with personal development. I started becoming obsessed with personal development when I was in real estate. But when I got into network marketing, I started to read every single book that I could get my hands on. The first book I read was my first year in network marketing. This is by a guy named Mark Yernell. And that book was like what to expect when you're expecting when you're pregnant. It tells you everything that's going to happen your first year. And it was really powerful. And then I read How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie and Who Ate My Frog by Brian Tracy and any book that I could find. And then, then I started going online and I watch YouTube videos. And this is 12 years ago. So, you know, the, 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 the YouTube, you know, uh, videos weren't as, 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 the library wasn't as extensive as it is right now, but you don't have to pay tens of thousands of dollars to see Tony Robbins. You just go online and Google him and you can watch anything you want to watch. And then I connected with this guy named Eric Worre, who wrote the book GoPro, and he's one, one of the most successful network marketing trainers, on, is the most successful on the planet. And Eric taught me about the four healthy steps to have a six-figure mindset in network marketing. So I'm gonna go through those four steps right now and write these down. Number one is awareness. Like what on earth are you thinking about? What are you saying to yourself every single day, right? What is it that you're doing with your mind? Because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and getting the same results. So number one is be aware of where your head is at. Take inventory of, of your thoughts. And then number two is understanding why you're that way. If you understand why you're that way, what triggers you, what brings you up, what brings you down, what, what makes you happy, what makes you sad, what inspires you, you'll be able to modify your life a little bit. So, so think about what you're thinking about and think about why you're being triggered certain ways. And number three is disassociation. This is probably one of the hardest things for some people because in order to make a six figure income or to be a successful entrepreneur in any business, guess what? You might have to change some people you hang out with because you are the sum of the top of well, the five people that you spend the most time with. So you have to think about who and what. Maybe you need to disassociate yourself with um, scrolling on social media. Maybe it brings you down when you start comparing yourself to other people. Maybe you need to change some friendships. Maybe whatever that disassociation is, that is a 100% effective way of changing the way that you think and the way you feel because the key is like, you want to hang around with people that boost your productivity, that raise your vibration, right? Not lower it. And then the next step, number four, there's actually five steps here, is to recondition your mind. So once you know what messes you up, once you know what triggers you, then you can recondition your mind. The, the number one way to recondition your mind is to become a lifelong learner. Feed your mind, read books, read books that you like. If you're, if, you're, if you're a procrastinator, then read books on procrastination. Um, Brian Trace's great book, like Who Ate My Frog or who, who yeah, Eat Your Frog. It's, it's how to get things done first thing in the morning. So there's so many things that you can do. Um, get a mentor. You know, there's so many amazing people that, like I said, that you can, you can get online and for free or go to your upline. There's so many incredible people here in Modere that you can follow. So you need people to push and inspire you. And so the fifth 
part of this step to be a um, mindful six-figure entrepreneur is immerse yourself. After I met Ozma and I made a decision to join Modere and build my liquid collagen business, I immersed myself, immersed myself in everything that I possibly could. And granted, remember, I was doing this part-time while I was still selling real estate. So you can immerse yourself while you're doing, while you're doing your job. You can do it part-time or full-time. It doesn't mean you have to do it full-time. But I immerse myself into a better environment. I immerse, my, immerse myself to spend time with great people. Um, I was creating new habits for myself. I was reading every single solitary book I could on network marketing and leaders and what they're doing. And, and one of the things that, that you can do to immerse yourself that a lot of people don't do enough is I plugged into every call. I plugged into every, we didn't have Zooms back then, but I plugged into webinars and I plugged into like every possible thing that I could plug into to raise my knowledge, to raise my skill set and to raise my vibration. And, you know, you got to become who you hang out with. And that's why like winning the trips with Modair, winning trips to these escape trips are so powerful because you get, you put, put yourself in an environment with winners, you get, when you go to convention, you raise yourself up, you raise your vibration because you put yourself in an environment of big thinkers, people that are passionate and people that are making things happen. So one of the things that it's really important to remember is it takes time to build a business. It takes time. I mean, you've got to give yourself time to succeed. One of the things that I think people just want so much instant gratification. Um, I personally worked my business for two years before I was able to replace my real estate income and go full time. So for somebody else, it might take three years or four years or five years. Some people it might take 10 years, it doesn't matter, but give yourself time to succeed. Write down this quote, this is really important. Be urgent in your actions and patient in your results. What does that mean? That means you want to create urgency. When, when I started building, I was, I had so much, so much excitement and so much passion and so much, so much energy about what I was doing. People were just attracted to me. I was like a magnet. I, I was I, I always created so much urgency, the, the next meeting and the next phone call and then the, the, the next, everything was urgent about what I was doing. And I created urgency with people to join, to join me because I had that urgency, but be patient with the results. Does that make sense, everybody? Be urgent in your actions and be patient in your results. You know, you'll never get rich quick with any business, right? This is not a Ponzi scheme. This is a real business. And so your first year, you, your goal is to really just get to learn the business, you know, get, do well, survive, get through it, learn, become better. But, but it, it people have to understand like you're a business owner. And one of the things that, you know, I always tell people like, if, if you don't understand this, the, the, the residual income, the linear in income versus the, the you know, the, the two different types of income. And that's why I was here because I had the linear income, right? I didn't have the residual income. But if you understand that you are typically very underpaid your first year, you're typically underpaid, but then you become overpaid as you as your business grows. So it's not a get rich quick scheme. It's not it's it's something that like every other profession, you have to learn a skill set. So if you understand that you're building an asset, it makes it it makes it a little easier. This is not a job. This is your own personal business, and. Um, and, and, the, and the goal is to have income for many, many years to come, not like a job. So when you shift from that mindset to, I am the CEO of my own business, this is something that I can 
do long term. This income is going to pay me for months and years to come. And sometimes, guys, when you don't even work, right? How many stories have we heard about somebody getting sick and they haven't been able to work for months and their residual income from their Modair business has kept them afloat as pay their bills. So, um, and the next thing is people join people, not businesses. So you must become more to earn more. We're in the people business, right? We're in the people business. You, your number one goal is to be someone worth joining. Be someone worth joining. People are gonna look at you more than they are gonna look at BioCell or Trim or anything else. They're gonna look at you more than they're look at anything else. If they wanna join a team, they're gonna look at you deeper and harder than they are the business, right? So your skills pay the bills. You need to read, you need to listen to audio tapes, you need to watch inspirational videos. I can't tell you how much, how many years I went without watching. I don't even have, I don't think we had Netflix back then when I first started, but I didn't watch TV for years. I didn't. Everything I did, I was just totally consumed with reading and learning. And, 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 it, was, and it was fun. It was fun because when you're growing and you're feeling good about what you're doing and now all of a sudden you're attracting more people and you're starting to make money, it's super fun. So another thing is like, if you wanna make a six figure in income, you wanna to get to elite, you better have a business plan. Guys, you know, you gotta take this seriously. How, do you, how many business owners do you know that don't have a plan? I don't know anybody who starts a business and doesn't have some th thick business plan, right? I mean, at the very least, have some written goals down with some timelines. You know, all successful people have a plan. And so if you're not, if you're not taking this seriously, I mean, you, people just don't get to a six-figure career without some type of planning. It just doesn't happen. This isn't free money. This isn't the lottery. This isn't a scheme, like I said. This is real business. It's a real hard asset. And so, you know, as you're going through your everyday life, you got to also have uh, realistic expectations, right? That's why the first year network marketing book was so powerful because it made me realize that this is a business of numbers. It's a numbers game. And I already built that, you know, muscle of numbers and rejection through my real estate business, but not everybody understands that. But if you understand, like everyone goes through the same difficult, you know, process of being rejected, people tell you no. And it's like, if you can get one out of 10 people to say yes to you, that's amazing. You're doing amazing. And over, over time, you can build a huge team, a massively huge team. But if you don't know what to expect because you're not plugged into your leadership, you're not plugged into the cause, you haven't read the book, you haven't done the work, then you're going to quit because you're going to think you suck and it's all your fault when you, don't, when, when you understand it's just the, the nature of the business. So what I love best about network marketing and about our business model is that you are literally in business for yourself. You're it, you're the boss, you run the show, but you're not by yourself. And you think about what we've created here at Freedom Legacy, you know, you think about the leadership here, how, how much time and effort and energy David and all the other leaders put into this team. Like we have such an amazing support system here that, you, you know, and I have to say that I, I am probably gonna say that the, that's the one thing that the people make the biggest mistake about is the, 
not using your leadership, not le using your upline. Like I built my entire elite empire through three-way three -way chats and three-way calls. The whole business was built on three ways, three ways and, present, and, and presentations. The entire, I was on a three-way call or chat every day, all day. So I learned, and what's so cool about that is I learned everything about my business from my upline leaders, because what it is is repetition is another skill. So I'm on a three-way chat. I put my prospect on a call with David and David does all the talking. I do all the listening. David's training me while he's sharing the information with the prospect. When you hear that over and over and over and over again, guess what? then you, you're able to do it yourself. So what we do in our business is we learn, then we do, and then we teach. We learn by listening and watching our upline leaders do it, right? Guys, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We don't need to change the systems. We don't need to do anything. The way that your business is going to grow is by duplication. And the number one way to duplicate our business is to do three-way chats because it's easy. And I know I can, I can, I can probably, and you don't have to raise your hand, but I probably can ask so many of you who is underutilizing your upline in three-way chats. This is a business of follow the leader, follow the person that's successful. It's all of it. It's just a tool. It's just a tool. So with that, I'm going to, I'm going to switch over and I'm going to move right into heart centered leadership here because they're very, they're very tied together. I mean, anybody who's a really successful entrepreneur is probably moving their way into some type of a leadership position. And most leaders that are successful are heart-centered, and especially in in our um, in our beautiful business model, that you can't be successful unless you help your people become successful, right? So I'm going to ask you guys, what kind of leader would you like to be? What kind of leader would you like to be? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Some of you are already leaders, right? Bold, heart-centered, no ego. But what kind of leader would you like to be? Stay with that and become that person because you get to decide. And guess what? Leadership is a skill. It's practicable, it's learnable, and it is like a muscle at the gym. You can build your leadership skills. Simon Sinek, uh, one of my favorite leadership authors, he's a famous speaker um, and a leadership guru. He says that leadership is like parenting. We all have the capacity to be a leader, but it doesn't mean everybody should be or even wants to be. So if you don't want to be a leader and you don't want to have a big team, then don't build your customer pod. But just remember, you still have to lead yourself. And I can tell you, anybody who's not, um, who's not building a team, but building a big customer pod, they're a heart-centered leader because they're doing the work. They're just, they're just expressing it a little differently. So Simon says that to be a great leader, you need to have empathy, and you need to have perspective. Write those two things down. Empathy and perspective. And the real job as a leader is not to be in charge, but to take charge of the people in your team. To take care, not take charge, I'm sorry, to take care of the people on your team. So the real job as a leader is not to be in charge, but to take care of the people on your team. 
And your mission as a leader is to get your team highly engaged, emotionally connected, and inspired. I'm going to say that again. Your mission as a leader is to get your team highly engaged, emotionally connected, and inspired. So the first thing you want to do as a leader is you want to stop talking and start listening. If you have a team already, and if you don't listen, because this is, this is key here, I'm going to ask you, how well do you know your people? How well do you know your people? Do you know their why? Do you know their dreams? Do you know their strengths? Do you know their weaknesses? How well do you know your people? So as a leader, as a heart-centered leader, it's really important that you connect with them. John Maxwell wrote a book, Everyone Communicates, But Very Few People Connect. Do you connect with your team? Do you ask them what they want? Do you ask them what they need? Do you know what their goals are? How could you be a great heart-centered leader, coach, mentor to people if you don't even know what they want? Really? Think about it. You can never over communicate with people and don't assume anything. And what I love, what I love is when I, when I enroll somebody brand new, I try to have that strategy session with them very early, you know, within the first two days of, of enrolling somebody. And then I do what Tony Robbins taught me to do. I play catch. And when you play catch with somebody, you have, you, you, they tell you what they want. They tell you their weaknesses. They tell you their strengths. They tell you their goals. They tell you their dreams. They tell you everything. You ask them what you can do to help them. And then you give them an assignment. You throw the ball. And they catch it. And if they throw it back to you, you give them another assignment. And if they do it, throw it back to them and they back, back and forth, back and forth. And that's how you know you've got somebody who wants to be a six figure earner because they play catch with you. Now, if somebody, if I throw somebody the ball and they don't throw it back, I still give it a couple more shots. Here you go, I'm gonna throw you the ball. But after you know a couple of misses and I don't get the ball back, I take a break. And I move on to somebody else because, you know, and I come back to them, I'll follow up with them in an, another time. But that is such a great way for you to know whether somebody is uh, for real or not. And it's so important as a heart centered leader to also speak life into their dreams. Gosh, people, you know, especially now with everything that's going on in the world, there's a lot of crazy, wacky, negative stuff, right? So if you bring somebody on board and you, and, and, and you can just breathe some life into them, there's so much negativity. And, and you think about how many people try to bring me down and talk me out of being in network marketing. That happens to everybody. So you've got you've to prepare for that. But you can be that one person. You can be that one person that, that breaks through their negativity with positivity and you create or you cast that vision for them and you believe in them and you you just because sometimes when people believe that you believe in them you might be the only person that believes in them but you believe in them they might just go to work and they might feel good about themselves and um and that's what a heart center leader does like you create an environment of encouragement and when you do that People believe that they can do anything and you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You don't know, you know, most people just, they never ever get, um, they, they just, they, they never get any kind of positivity you know, fed to them at all. It's just constantly negative between family members and their bosses and everybody like that. So remember to also be authentic. 
like one of the things that people can sniff out is, you know, you want to make, you want to make your people, your team feel like you really believe in them. You care about them, not, not just for a paycheck, but you really care about them as a person. And as a leader, you want to give whatever credit comes your way away to your team. You want to give the recognition to everybody on your team, no matter what, because people never get recognized. We underestimate the power of recognition. So if you have an opportunity as a heart-centered leader to give away, be generous with the recognition, be generous with the compliments, be generous with, with whatever positivity you can, because you'd be amazed. You'd be amazed at the results of your business when you create an environment where you're speaking life into people. And the last thing I'm going to say is, I'm actually going to, I'm going to just, two more things I want to say. Um, great leaders are solution oriented. And this is a really, this is a really big, I'm going to say big, uh, it could be a challenge. It could be a little challenging when you're dealing with a lot of people in network marketing, right? You got big teams of people, you got different personalities. You get issues, you got problems, right? But leaders are solution oriented and you wanna create a culture in your team to never complain to your upline or to the corporate office without a solution. You, you have a problem? Just bring one suggested solution to that conversation. It changes the tone of the conversation. The other thing I wanna just say, this is a number one rule and make sure that this is something you live by. Never, ever, 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 did I say ever, ever, complain to your downline. Ever, or your sideline. If you have anything that, that you're upset about or something didn't go right, or you have an issue, bring it to your upline. Because the toxicity, the, 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 the the negativity that you will spread through your organization can and usually does destroy teams. And ask yourself at any given moment when somebody, somebody comes to you with some drama or somebody comes to you with gossip, are you like, are, are you gonna stop it dead in its tracks or are you gonna feed into it? And as a heart-centered leader, as a, you know, you look at some of these top income earners in Modere, they don't gossip. Their leadership is so powerful that they know how to mitigate and stop the drama. So if you wanna build a six-figure organization, stop the gossip, stop the drama, no matter what, and take all of the challenges that you have and you feel to your upline not your downline. Be the person so valuable, grow so much that you always have more to give. And the way to do this, and I sound like a broken record, is by personal development. Readers are leaders. What are you reading now? What are you reading now? Do you have a book on your night table? Do you have a book on your you know, on that coffee table, what are you reading? Most successful people in the world read a book a week. The most successful people, they read all the time. People like John Maxwell, Simon Sinek, Brene Brown, the, there's so many amazing authors out there, turn off the Netflix and start reading a book. And the last thing, the real last thing I'm gonna say is you guys love your team. Love your people. Don't use people and love money. Love people and use the money. And remember, the more money you have, the more amplified you're going to already be. Like whatever money, whatever money you have, it's going to amplify who you already are. So make sure that you grow into when you become that person, when you have that six-figure income, you have that six-figure elite business, 
make sure that you've done the work to get there and make it fun. Because I promise you this, if you create a community of people that are having fun, that people feel belong, they, they feel special, and their, their business is growing, they will never leave. They'll never leave. You'll have an awesome business and an awesome life. So with that being said, I believe in all of you and I love this team. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to David. So thank you guys. And we love you. Give it up for Lauren Robin. That was a mic drop right there. That was just absolutely fantastic. When she speaks, she speaks with poise, confidence, and posture. Did you guys pick up on her posture and her confidence? It's easy to have confidence and posture when you're already making the six figures and beyond, when you've already seen the success. But when you're still figuring it out and you're still not sure and there's ups and downs, that's the time when you need the confidence the most. And everything she said was just on point. The thing that was the biggest takeaway for me, and I'll bring that up in my portion today, were the four words that I say all the time, if you want to grow a bigger business, you got to talk to more people. She said that a couple of times. That's the solution to any problem we have in our business, guys. Talk to more people. I love that. Um, I also love the three words that have been, a, have been critical uh, to us in our business. Learn, do, and teach. We learn it. We do it and we teach it. That's what we do for a living. Learn, do, teach. That's what we're doing today. And so with that, thank you so much. Um, and now we're going to move into module three. Um, now we're, we're moving a little slower than I hope to, but it doesn't matter because it's all golden. But we do need to pick up the tempo a little bit since um, we each have two modules to cover in 30 minutes. So now we're at almost nine. So we're going to move it quickly here. Um, but this, and we don't want to bounce over this because this is super, super important uh, when it comes to making an impression on social media. And I think you could all agree if you've watched Amber Rainsbury, she's the one that inspired me on social media. You may not know this, but it was Amber Rainsbury that actually created the Freedom Legacy Team Facebook group. She created that. She's like, Dave, we need a group to put everybody into and post all the trainings and all the announcements and we're freedom global team at the time and she created that in fact um she's the one that came to the table when our old company was transitioning to mode air and said man we really need to step up our social media game she was all over it and since then has built all kinds of groups she's got groups with you know thousands and thousands of people where she pulls customers from and gets leads from and she's really a master of social media and she's got her branding down and i'll just preface this one one thing i want you as you're listening to amber talk i want you to ask yourself this question would you follow you if you went to your facebook profile right now if you went to your instagram right now and i didn't know you would I be, would, would, would Dave Simney be somebody that would sign up in your business? Yes or, or no, or why not? Are you putting your best foot forward on social media? And maybe humble bragging a little bit, maybe thinking a little bit more about your content. So Amber, I'm ready for you to drop your best nuggets of wisdom and how to build a six-figure online business. These are the things you gotta be mindful of and work on. So with that, let's give it up for Amber Rainsbury, Elite One Platinum Black One. What's up, Amber? Take it hey. away. Oh, thank you. Thanks for all your sweet comments. You guys are so nice. I do need you to let me share my screen. You have to make me the host, I guess. Because I made some, because I am a visual person, because if you don't know my background, I was in pharmaceutical sales, and we learned in pharmaceutical sales that when you show, when you're talking to these doctors, for example, we'd have this visual aid. And we learned that if you show, if you just talk, then people would like remember 15 to 20% of the information. If you put a visual aid, they would remember like 50 to 60% of the information. But if you spoke and showed a visual, they would remember about 70 to 80%. So that's why I like love to have the visual aid. 
All and, right, I'm gonna uh, send it over. I'm gonna ask and see if Lauren can make you host. I'm. I think I accepted as co-host, so I'm not seeing the ability right now to make you host. So let's see if Lauren has the magic tools, and we'll keep working as you're introing this section. Yeah, I got your your. Okay, Amber, you are host now. You just want to make sure you um, you make sure your screen is on speaker mode and gallery when appropriate. Thanks. Okay, good. Um, all right. So, so keep that in mind too with your prospects is like showing a visual. They would actually joke with us that um, it would be better for us to show a visual and not talk <laughs> when I was a ref. So we had a guilty, we were like always bad about showing our visuals. So here, hopefully this helps you remember things. I'll try to go quickly. I know we're kind of running behind on time. Um, so I kind of just did a real basic presentation here, high level. Um, so we're going to talk about, you know, how to make an impression with social media, talking about branding, putting your best foot forward, pro, how to set up your profile, a mission statement, growing your friends list, staying consistent and building relationships and staying plugged in. So branding, one of the things that we talk about a lot at Modere is that you are branding you and not Modere. Like I was with Beachbody before and guess what? It was all about Beachbody. Everybody knew I was with Beachbody. I was like the Beachbody queen. And little did I know that that was kind of a disadvantage in a sense, because people would actually go to the Beachbody site, buy the Beachbody, then they would be like, Amber, I'm doing the Beachbody program. They didn't buy from me. Um, so, you know, you're branding new, and that's why you see a lot of curiosity posts with our company, because reality is like, you know, you may go on to sell other things later in your life, hopefully not, you know, it'll be here forever with Modir, but, you know, you're selling you, people are buying you, they want to know you. So um, people basically buy from those they know, like, and trust. And you don't need to compare yourself to anybody else because you are unique in your own right. You know, like not everybody likes me. I mean, I have a lot of people that have unfriended me and followed me because they aren't my people. And that's what I've learned to be completely okay with. Um, if you truly want to be yourself, um, you're going to find the right people that connect with you and they don't connect with me. Um, so that's what's, that's what I learned over time and, you know, focusing on, we always th want to think I need to know more about the product. You know, I need to know all this stuff, but truth is, you know, facts tell, but stories sell and we want to sell, right? So all you really need to know is your story and why you're using the product, why you're doing this. Um, so people come to social media to basically connect with friends and family, to be entertained, to be inspired to be educated, you know, they go into their groups of interest and they learn more, they interact with people that have similar interests to them. Um, they like it when you share things that you're teaching them stuff. Um, they like, they actually do now shop and find new products on social media. Like seven years ago, that wasn't as much of a thing as it is right now, but people actually do go online to, to find products, especially on Instagram and TikTok. So, and they go to catch up on, you know, current events. <laughs> Some people, it is the news channel for them. They don't check the news, they check the social media. Um, now your profile pages, we're gonna talk about how to setting up your page like a pro. And I, you know, I forget sometimes that people don't know this right out the gates, but one thing that I learned, you know, through my just learning of social media, I learned social media through, you know, through doing beach body actually. And started to have a desire to, because I'm like, this is fantastic. You can get people coming to you. You don't have to have parties. I mean, I, I was like, I was all about it. I'm like, show me this shortcut. Show me that, you know, secret advantage to make more money with this business. So I tried to learn all of this. So you want to have a clear headshot, like these beauties here on my team, Paige and Laurel and Stefan. So having a clear headshot of you, um, not your kids, not your dog, you know, not the sunset, show your face. Okay. Um, this is, if you're serious about the business, this, you're going to have to show your face. Um, you're going to have a little headline and I'm going to have some examples in the next couple slides to shows what you're about. So people that when they go and look at your page, they kind of say, Oh, okay. Like this is what she's all about. Do I want to follow her friend or not? Um, and it's a way to connect with your, the people you're trying to attract into your business. So I always think of it as attraction marketing. That's like what I do. And I want to attract the people that are like me, like a magnet. And you want to have your privacy settings set to public. You got to, 
I remember that moment of truth being like, oh, do I want to open myself up out there? Like, you know, you're nervous about showing your kids and things like that. But I decided I'm going all in. Like, I'm going to do it. Other people do it. Plenty of people do it where they're public. They show their family and they are successful. So I say do that. And I'm, I'm not going to go over how to set up two factor authentication. I did put that up on my page the other day. That's just something for security for yourself. I would say um, with a lot of people getting hacked these days, that's something extra I'm recommending. But you would have to just Google how to do that. Okay. So here are some examples on our team. So you can see all of these leaders, they all have this. Okay. So David has his family up here on the top cover, he has his good profile headshot. And then he has a little intro, right? Dad, top industry earner, mentor, you know, um, nine figure team, 100 plus travel club speaker, college and gangster, right? So then we have Mel. Again, a beautiful headline up top here. And it tells people right away, you know, prove, oh, sorry. I can't see it because my, this toolbar is on the top. I help fempreneurs prevent burnout, increase vitality, make time for ma matters most. Right, so that catches your eyes. And then she again has her intro. So you notice, you'll see a theme here. Everybody ha that is like a top earner who's really serious about the business has their page like this. You have Tara, um, she has again, a nice photo and her intro here, her engagement photo up here, you know, nutritionist, anti-aging targeted detox on a mission to help you look and feel amazing at any age, right? So, you know, immediately we about this me, um, I'm, I'm a former pharmaceutical rep as part of my story, work from anywhere, mompreneur, ex-farm rep turned health advocate. And I get a lot of compliments on this. Like I get people that are like, wow, that's an interesting story. So I'm just telling something, think about yourself and like, what makes you unique? You, everyone has something that makes their story unique. And it's going to be this people that are your people are going to see that and be like, oh, I want to know that person. Um, so now we're talking about growing your friends list. Every day you should be adding people. You should be, when I uh, started the business, I had like 450 Facebook friends. And I learned this concept of like the three vital behaviors, you call them. Like one was being a product of the product. So using the products, sharing the products, you know, on your social media. Two was inviting and growing your network by three to five friends every single day. Now, when you do that every single day, that really adds up quickly. So it may sound like a little bit, you should just three friends a day, three friends a day, three. Can you do three friends a day? I mean, that will take you five minutes. So every day you should be adding friends. And when I look at my, my reps friend list, like if I don't see them growing that, that, that kind of concerns me a little bit and um, that you've got to be growing your network. Let's just think about it in your perspective. That's more eyeballs seeing your posts, more chances. Somebody's going to see your post and ask you, what is it? Um, and then the third one is that personal development. So those three vital behaviors, but growing your friends list. So when I first started, what I did, I literally was like, went through my yearbook. I went and wrote down a list of like all the places I worked. And what I would do is I would actually go to a friend, like say I had one friend from my prior job um, or like I was in San Diego state and I was in like a business fraternity. I went to one friend that was in that business fraternity and I looked through their friends list, add, add, add. I added all the people that were, that I knew in college. I added people from my old works. I added people that I went to my church's pay, Facebook page and Instagram pages. And I followed a bunch of people, you know, anything you've been part of, write a list down and start like finding people. That's, that's the best thing. It was one of the easiest ways to grow my business because it's like, um, we actually, Laurel and I planned our high school reunion. That was part, I literally promised you that I started the Facebook group, um, for our high school so I could sell more beach body <laughs> originally. And the irony is I ended up doing Modere by the time I had the reunion, but we ended up getting a lot of people in Modere, you know, using the products. So, you know, I was like, I'm going to be, I had a strategy. People want to look good for their reunion. So they want to like get fit, lose weight, or they want to lose their wrinkles. So, you know, there's all kinds of things you can do to, make yourself known. And then you go in there and connect with them. Oh my gosh. Hi. Like I haven't seen you since high school. How's it going? What's new with your life? You know, I'm talking to them and friends of friends. So, you know, I'm going to show you on the next page, like how you can see your friends list and how you can add people on there, but look at friends that are not in Modare, maybe friends that haven't even bought from you. 
And, you know, you can go and like add some of their friends and maybe their friends would be interested. Then your Facebook groups. I mean, those are huge. You can have your own Facebook group where you're adding value on something that you're passionate about. It's what I end up doing over time. But first, um, you know, I would go into groups like about, you know, eating paleo or, um, you know, stitch fix. I mean, I like their clothing. So I would actually go in there and like shop or sell things. Um, you could go into like a Tony Robbins group or something. Um, one of my reps with, was like, she was really into dogs. And so she actually went into these like Labrador groups and connected with people and she was a nurse. So she could connect with other nurses. So you find kind of your niche of people you could connect with and just go in there and do that every single day, start adding people. Now you don't really have to message them. You can, you know, you can say, oh, you know, and I connected with you from this group. Um, I heard that can be not recommended because sometimes they might tell the admin or something. A lot of times people will just accept your friend request without any kind of message, but then you start inter interacting on their page or send them a message. Um, and then hashtags, or if you're doing Instagram, then you can um, use hashtags and other accounts to find people. And I'll show you a little quick overview how to do that. So here's a friend of mine who's not a customer, <laughs> who I wish was a customer, but she's not. Um, but she's a friend in the community. You said we have 114 mutual friends. Um, she's not a rep, not a customer, but we have lots of mutual friends. And basically what I did is I can go through her friend list here and I see like, look, we have 18 mutual friends. Uh, Alyssa, I have 30 mutual friends. I have this girl, April, I have 54 mutual friends. So this kind of person I can add and just be like, they're going to accept my friend request because we have so many mutual friends. And then I might look through their list of mutual friends and say, send them a message. Oh my gosh, we have so many mutual friends. I just thought we should, con so many great mutual friends. I just thought we should connect. How do you know Courtney? Right. I mean, that's a great way to start a conversation. Super low pressure. It's not spammy. I wouldn't send them a message asking them to look at my product or anything. It's just a, a way to connect. Oh, you know, what, what's, school do your kids go to? How old are your kids? Blah, blah, blah. And that's it. And then I drop it. And now I have an instant connection with them. It's not spammy, but now they're going to be like, oh, well, like this girl's nice. She's cool. Like we connected and we are now kind of have a warm relationship. Now she'll be following my stories, you know, and be like, oh, what, what's that? Right. So and then an Instagram strategy that I use is I like to go to people that like I always see all my <laughs> friends reposting this guy. So it's pretty funny. Um, he always posts a lot of like health, you know, natural health type of things. And so you could go to his page and I'll actually show you this. I actually have it up here. Okay. So what I would do is someone like this. I'll go, I could go up here onto this post. And I can like look at all these people that have commented, right? Lifestyle, fitness, because these are real people. So sometimes like some people, if you just look at their followers, it could be bots or things like that. But these are real people who are engaging, you know, and they're like, yeah, doctor, yes. And so I might look at some of these people and I like to connect with women mostly. So I could look at her, you know, profile. Like she's an author but we are like-minded, right? So then I might just go on her page and comment on some of the posts, right? Um, and she has stories. I like it when they have stories because to me, that shows that they're more like engaged on social media, right? So that's like a great way to find a few people a day on Instagram. I mean, could you do that three times? Could you just find three people a day in this method? Like, look, I just found one good, I know this is a good person to follow, right? I'm gonna follow her right now. And I'm just gonna like go and like a couple things, right? I'm not gonna show you all this, but that's all it is. That's what I do. And most of the time, about 30% of the time, they'll follow you back. Um, then staying consistent. So, you know, use, if you need ideas, use that shout out for ideas. Uh, follow other social marketers because the thing is that you got to realize that you may not be successful right away and one thing I found over time is like 
I mean, I've been doing this for many years now. Most everyone has bought from me. Um, people that I screwed up with when I was new have bought from me now. Like I didn't know what I was doing. I sent them maybe spammy messages at first, but they've all come around and bought from me or people that were interested say it's too expensive. Two years later, they buy from me. So just know it should, instead of thinking to yourself, like I'll see if it works. I'll see if it I'm successful. Um, I just want to encourage you to really uh, just commit. Just know that if you do stay consistent, people will eventually catch on, people will eventually be interested. People like the first three months, they're just looking to see if you're gonna keep doing this. They're just like, oh, let's see if she's gonna if this, she's just gonna stop doing this or she's gonna quit. But you know, when you're doing it a year from now, people are impressed by that and not switching companies and staying in the course. So um, follow other social marketers. You know, when you are when you have a new person, I would tell them to add everyone in your team page, like get them plugged in. And if you're not like friends with at least 20 people on the team, like you need to become friends with them because then you're going to see what they're doing and you're going to, you know, you can just copy what they're doing. It's totally fine. Especially when you see that they are getting good engagement. Um, you can screenshot the post when I, like yesterday, I am, um, there's a girl I know that's wind, her name is Wendy and she's always got great stories. So I was like, I want to promote the mother's day sale. So I went to her stories. I just screenshotted them. I just, you know, changed them up a little bit, added some more things to it. And, you know, I find you'll find people that you like their stuff and show up every day, no matter what. Um, even if you just ask a question on your social media, I have um, a whole list of engaging questions. If you guys want a copy of that, um, I think I've shared in the group before, but that's one thing that really helps just asking questions on your profile. And uh, one of the trainers that I used to work with talked about this concept of being arrogant as a rock star. And so, um, you know, it's like you're sharing every little thing that you're doing. Like, so some people, it's nervous at first because you're like, nobody cares what I'm having for breakfast or nobody cares about the workout I do. But that is actually what connects you with people. Um, we have a group going right now where we're doing like intermittent fasting and trying, you know, doing like a lean 30 challenge. And I shared my basic boring meal that I do because I'm so lazy with cooking and I just make ground beef and like cottage cheese and blueberries. And a bunch of people were like, that's how I eat too. And it's like, you know, this is sometimes how you eat healthy on the run when you're busy, you just, just eat basic things. And I connected with people in that way. So you never know what like a little average daily thing you're doing, or you're talking about like how it drives you crazy that it's hard to keep your house clean. It's like, you don't need to be perfect. All the moms out there are struggling with this. So um, you're kind of acting like a rock star. Like everyone wants to know what Lady Gaga is doing all day long, right? In her daily life. They would love to follow her around and see her every move. So just pretend like you're that rock star and talk about why you're doing what you're doing throughout the day. Talk about the struggles, you know, talk about how you're like, like we're in our group. We're not, you know, we're not, I'm trying not to like have any alcohol this month. It's like Cinco de Mayo is the other day. I'm like, I'm not doing it. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I'm committed to my goals. And so you can talk about the sort of things and people like that. Um, oops, sorry. This is it's not supposed to be in there. Okay. Now we're going to talk about building relationships. We're about to wrap it up. Um, so when I was new, I actually really sucked at relationships. <laughs> I was like, they kind of say that you can be in relationship karma when you first start network marketing. I didn't have a network. I like definitely couldn't have a party that anyone would come to. I tried, trust me, and people, I had spent all this money on food. No one came to my party except for my mom. <laughs> but I had to learn actually better. Um, I had good relationship with the doctors I worked. That was my job, but just like average people, I, I was really busy with work and my kids and I hadn't spent a lot of time building friendships and things. So um, basically people, again, buy from those they know, like, and trust. So you may have to learn how to build better relationships and that's everything. So if it's all about you all the time, like help me, I need my business to grow. I need to make money. I want to do this. I want to do that. Nobody cares. Sorry. Like nobody cares. Everyone wants to know the with them, like what's in it for me. Just remember people like talk about themselves. So show interest in others and they will show interest in you. So you don't talk like in the, in the messages with people, like you learn to just ask questions and not need to like write a huge response back. Like 
keep your response really short and then ask them another question. So again, it's kind of like that um, playing ball. Every time you're having a, what a salesperson does is like, they know that whoever ends the conversation in question has the power, okay? Um, and your, uh, your prospects aren't typically gonna be versed in this. So they're just gonna answer your questions. You don't wanna conversate with them for a half an hour, but you know, um, I recommend this thing called form. It's called family occupation recreation message. So if I were to connect with somebody I haven't talked to since high school, I'd be like, oh gosh, Anna Marie, how are you? Oh, your family is so beautiful. Where are you living right now? How old are your kids? Do they play sports? You know, what are you doing for work right now? What's the occupation? Oh, what does your husband do? How did your husband and you meet? Then recreation. Oh, are you guys planning anything fun for summertime? What are you guys doing? Any vacations coming up? Do your kids go to some, you know, summer camp? Do you do any hobbies? And then a message could be something that come if something comes up that could be an opening for the product, you can do a message there, or you can just like leave it. And now you've just warmed up that conversation. So you're building a relationship. And then what's going to happen eventually is they're going to have been talking and talking about themselves. And they're going to be like, what are you doing these days? And then you may say, oh, I just started this new business. You know, I'm doing a health and wellness supplements. Really love it. And you kind of just give a basic and then they may ask you more detail about it or they may not, right? But they'll eventually start to ask you questions back. And that's really how you start to build a relationship. But Show genuine interest. People can always smell it if you're just trying to like do it just for sales, you know, really connect with people you want to talk to, you know, that you really actually want to know how they're doing. Um, listen more than you speak and then read some books on relationship building. That's like what I did when I first started. Um, I read, you know, how to win friends and influence people. Um, Charisma Myth was one of my favorite books ever. And then uh, influenced by Robert Caladini is another really good one. So there's a lot of really good books like that. Even one, I read one about like, likability factor, you know, what makes people like you? Like I was, I would listen to these on audio when I was driving to work and it really helped me out. And of course, staying plugged in. So, um, if you're not plugged in, there's a great analogy. My old boss at, I used to sell Cutco in college. He's talking about like hot coals. And so if you have like a lump of hot coals, they'll all stay warm. But if you take one of those and you set it off to the side, it's going to get cold. So if you're not plugged in, you're not going to be motivated. You know, you're not going to know what's going on. You're going to feel overwhelmed. You're going to feel like out of the loop. So try to stay plugged in. Um, in our Freedom Legacy team, you know, there's a area where there's pinned posts. And so if you're just lost, and same with our uh, Black Diamonds page, if you're lost, go in that group and look at the pin post. Everything recent is going to be there. And same thing with um, our company, One Voice. Like they have a company page, One Voice. That's for where all the Modere training is. And there's a calendar in there and they tell you what's going on. So knowing just how to access probably would be the most helpful thing, you know, how to access what's current. Or you can go to the shiftingretail.com slash buzz. I didn't put that on here. Um, so I know it can be overwhelming at first, but this I put Freedom Global calls our Freedom Legacy calls our you know Saturday 8 a.m. Monday 8 a.m. We have our company national call Monday 10 a.m. Pacific. That's in one voice, and then there's a monthly kickoff call which they email you about. And there's a calendar in our Shifting Retail back office, Oops. and that will help you to stay up on what promotions are going on. We have our Modere Life app. And that is also great for um, product resources and our uh, customers are in there. The shout app is all your social media posts. Um, this is that what it takes call like right here that I put Monday, 10 a.m. A social retail live. That's our group for business. So anyone that's interested in the business and we have our Modere Healthy Living page, which has all the product information testimonials. And then in the um, back office and shifting retail, there's just a ton of documents. Like when I was new, like Lauren said, I like Lauren did, she just like immersed herself in. That's just what I did. Like I watched the compensation video like 15 times. I mean, I wanted to understand how we got paid. I printed out the compensation plan. I watched the video and I watched it and watched it and watched it and looked at the thing and took notes and figured out how we get paid. You know, um, I went into the back office and I look through it, I clicked around, you just click around, look around there. 
Um, oh, you're going to find things. Go to the Modera website, click around there. Um, look at the products. You'll see there's product information pages, there's videos, there's landing pages. So I learned not by having somebody babysit me and show me all the stuff I learned because I sat there and like went and sought out information. Um, so this is a great tools map that's in the back office and it's in like documents. And so it kind of gives you a great, you know, map of everything and what it is. So you may need to use this for your first couple months while you're getting to know everything. But it's nice to know that it's all here for you and tells you here's what's in your life app. Here's what's in it. You know, here's the back office. Here's the buzz blog. And so they're trying to help you, you know, to learn how to access what you need to access. So that is all for this segment. I hope it was helpful. And I will pass it back to, to David. Love it, Amber. That was fire. Like so good. Like literally insane. You guys, so like a lot of it might have seemed like to some of you on here, it might have seemed very basic. Maybe some of it maybe felt like um you've heard some of it before. But again, I mean, these are all seven of these modules, guys, are what you need to be part of the six figure income crew. These are the basics. And I look at so many leaders who don't even have some of this together. And I say like leaders, I say people that, you know, when you start getting to director and, and you start getting to director two and things, and you start thinking, Hey, if, if I really want to go to elite one, if I really want a six figure biggest, I got to have all this stuff together. So um, thank you so much. I love pretty much. I mean, all of this is gold and I hope you guys are taking notes. I hope you'll tag your teams guys on this and um, all right, we're moving quick and we've got a lot to cover, but I want to take you into the next module. Thank you guys for hanging in there. Uh, we're over halfway done, uh, but we're going to blast through the next three modules and just knock this out of the park. So stay with me, strap on, take a little stretch, everybody. All right, take a little stretch. Let's see you guys. Let's go. Let's take a little bit of a stretch, get the blood pumping a little bit, do a little wiggly wiggly here with your notes and with your arms. All right, so let's do this, guys. We're going to blast into number four, module four, which is prospecting with purpose. And this is my favorite subject. I'm so glad that Amber showed the tools map because I'm also doing tools. Uh, but here's what I'll share. I am going to spend literally a, just a few minutes on the tools and I'm going to spend the bulk of my presentation today. My module is going to be on prospecting. Um, and then obviously Amber will take us into um you know, just some tips on presenting, putting your best foot forward when you're on that camera. And then we're going to take it away with some big announcements. So, all right, guys, here's what I want you to do. Hopefully you can read this whiteboard here. I don't know. Is it back? It's probably backwards, isn't it? Is it backwards? Is it like uh, reading the word ambulance or you guys can read this? All right, cool. On my camera, it looks backwards. All right. So we're going to talk about prospecting, but I want you to, to look at your notes and I want you to write the word prospecting at the top. All right. And then I want you to ask yourself right now, are you building a pod or are you building a team, right? Pod or team or both? Are you building both? And we want to just, I want you to just understand the benefits of building a customer pod. It's something that really everyone can do. It's something that most people start off doing. It's something that's, that's easier to do, right? We're just sharing something we love and people click on our link and they buy it. There's really no training, no mentoring. There's no leadership books. I mean, it's literally like, hey, <clears throat> I like this. Try it. Um, a, good, a good example of that are, is a lot of our influencers. They're so good at just showing things that they love and people trust them. And so they buy from them, right? It's also quicker to build a pod. So if you're building a pod, you can build a six-figure business building a pod. Now, what is a six-figure business um, in a pod? Well, six figures is would be like eight grand a month. So to have a six-figure pod, you pretty much need to be, well, 100% you need to be platinum black, right? Uh, but you need to be a little bit more than platinum black. I would say platinum black too, which would be 30,000 in your customer pod. If you did no team at all and you were platinum black too, that would be a very solid more you know six figure more than six figure business platinum black one is close right because that's fifteen thousand in your pot every month so platinum black one should be kind of like your end game like you're 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 gotta gotta get this goal gotta get the platinum black one which means you got to be platinum three 
three months in a row before you can even qualify to be platinum black one. Um, and that should be kind of like your, hey, if I'm just building a pod, platinum black one, and then eventually platinum black two, that's what I want to do. Um, it, you know, you get upfront money quicker, you get from 10 to 36%, you get paid twice a day. It's just easier to build a pod. Now the team, the team is going to take longer, right? Building a team takes longer. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of flakes. I'll just keep it real. There's a ton of flakes, man. People sign up, they're gung ho. All right, this is perfect. And there you go. And then they do their post and then work, work, work. They don't show up. And then they ghost you and you're like, dude, you just paid like 250 bucks. You signed up. There's so many flakes. In fact, I would say from when I started with my list of 350 people, I've signed up about 80 people personally between my wife and I over the last five, six years, about 80. It might be closer to a hundred now. Some people we enrolled under other people or for other people. So let's call it a hundred out of those hundred um, 50 people were here for at least a year. Um, I would say 80% of my income comes from 20 people out of the hundred. And I would say there's probably only, I would say probably 35 to 40% of those people are still here and ordering at least, but really only about 20% are doing anything with it. And I would say ultimately 10% are full on rocking, engaged, ready. So that's kind of the numbers. So to get your rock star, you kind of need to have 10 people. You kind of need to enroll 10 people to find your breakthrough. Some people get lucky and the first person they sign up is their breakthrough. I think Amber was the second person I signed up. Um, and that was because my wife met her in a park and it was like, it went from there. We built a relationship and ultimately um, you don't know when your breakthrough is going to come, but you just have to know that your breakthrough is going to come. You have to go until like Lauren said, until your breakthrough comes, despite not having one for the last year or the last two years, you have to keep going until, and, and this is why, you know, you have a bigger long-term residual on a team, right? But you got to be a little bit more bulletproof. So we're going to give you all the key tenets right here on prospecting with purpose. Purpose is just another word for intention. It means I'm going to be intentional about reaching out online, offline, building relationships. And I'm going to do that until, all right, until my breakthrough comes. Now, those of you that have already had a breakthrough, you know what the feeling's like. I was just having this conversation the other day um, with our friend Alex, you know, and it's like rock, you know, you know, I had a breakthrough. Angela and I had a breakthrough with Adrian and and I had a breakthrough with Roxy and then Roxy had a breakthrough with Alex and then Alex had a breakthrough with Marianne and everyone has their breakthrough. All the people with a comma in their check have had a breakthrough. So you got to be looking and every day wake up saying, who's my breakthrough going to be? When am I going to get my breakthrough? And you got to keep doing these following things with purpose, with intention until you get the breakthrough. Now, um, we're in a relationship business and we there's 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 four words that I said that's going to that's going to cause that breakthrough to happen quicker. Talk to more people. So if you want to write something down, talk to more people. That's it. We're in a relationship business. I tell people, hey, I, I make friends for a living. And people say, oh yeah, ha ha, what's that all about? Truly, it's relationship. I get to meet people, work with people, spend time with people. I am not digging ditches here. Now, to some, it may seem like work. To some, the, the, the idea of prospecting, whether you're prospecting for customers or prospecting you know, for business partners or both, it, it, it is the work part. It's the money. It's the money part. If you've got the leadership, you've got the mindset, you're putting your best foot forward on social media, you're doing all the things, right? And you're consistent. But no one's going to cross the finish line for you and get your first social marketer signed up. We've got group chats. We've got all kinds of systems. So here's what I did <clears throat> when I first started. And I'm just going to be real quick here because I know most of you know my story. So I'm going to be really quick. I had a lot of pressure. It was 2016. We just had our first son, Heston, which um, Lauren Robin was so awesome. She sent a little Boston Red Sox, a uh, little sweat sweatshirt and a little sweats um, as a, as a little present for Heston. And it was so cool over the years because we passed it down to Dawson 
And then we passed it down to Colton. I think by the time it got to Colton, the sweater was long gone, but the sweats were still there. And um, it, it made its way all the way down through my three kids. And now it doesn't fit Colton anymore. So, but you know, it, it, it's funny because when I started, I had all this pressure because I was out on my own, <clears throat> you know, Ozma, I, I love her to death. I love everything about, I learned so much from her, you know, but she didn't give me any, um, she didn't give me any, uh, let's say any, uh, how do I say it? Any advantages that, you know, I, I didn't like walk in with like this giant team or anything. I had to start at zero. Um, I gave myself a year. I had earned that after eight years in corporate, I, it, you know, call it a severance if you want, but I made the decision, Hey, I'm going over here. So I had a year cushion, you know, not everybody has that, but I, I had that cushion in my life, but you know, I had to get to like 15 grand a month. That was my, that was my goal. I was like, I got to get to 15 grand come hell or high water. So my first, uh, my first, like before I even left corporate, I was already making my list. Um, and I think literally about the same day that I left corporate was when we, when, when we signed up Amber, which was so great. She was our first breakthrough and what a breakthrough she has turned out to be. I mean, a solid elite leg, her business has grown. She, uh, she's built an incredible team. Now she had a breakthrough with Laurel. Laurel had a breakthrough with Lori and Stephane and everybody. Stephane's having breakthroughs with left and right. And Lori's having, everyone gets to a breakthrough and then another breakthrough and another breakthrough and boom, once you get layered of breakthroughs layer down in your teams of directors and directors and comma checks and comma checks, boom, now you have a Lauren Robin business. Now you can rock and roll for 10 years at a solid income, not show up for work if you don't want to, go do what you want when you want. And that is the dream of network marketing. They call it the five-year career. So if you believe in that, you better work like nobody's business. Why do people work in 90-day cycles in our business? Why, why is that so popular? Because we can run like crazy for 90 days and sign up, you know, two, three, four people, 10 people. And then if we just get that one breakthrough that takes off, woo, we just had our breakthrough. Now let me do another 90 day cycle. And then you do 90 days, 90 days, 90 days, because you don't want to burn out. You want to take a break. You want to take a week off, go unplug, go do what you want to do, reward yourself, and then come back up, pull up your pants again and go, boom, get another breakthrough. Because it's work talking to people. It, it is. You're reaching out if it's not something that comes natural to you. Uh, but what I did is I made a list of 350 people. I just did. I made a spreadsheet. I have it to this day. I actually have it pulled up on my desktop upstairs. And so guys like you got it. It, it all starts with a prospecting list. Your list is, is your lifeblood. And where do you get all those leads? You get them from, like Amber said, you get them from social media. She went through her high school. She went, Amber literally was the prime example of where do I get leads? Well, who did I go to church with? Where do I you know, memory jogger. Who do I know? Who do I know that wants to look younger? Who do I know that wants, you know, two paychecks? Who do I know that's successful? And the average person knows 1800 people on a first name basis, guys. So you're, you're only as good as your list. So I made a list of 350 people, 350 people. And I made a goal. I, I came downstairs. Actually, it was in this very office, crazy. And I walked in every day. And I said, I'm not leaving here until I've gotten on the phone with 10 people. Now, this is this is back at a time when I had like 300 friends on Facebook and I didn't even know what I was doing. And I was calling Amber like, hey, I think we should do like a Facebook group. Uh, you are really good at that. And you want to, can you start that? I don't even know how to do it. And Amber's like, oh, hello. I have like 10 right now. I have 10 right now. I know how to do that. And so we were help. Amber was helping me. Amber was coaching me on social media. But here's what I knew. I knew if I talked to more people, I would have a breakthrough. I knew that. And so I just made up my mind. I'm coming down here. And every day I'm going to talk to 10 people. I'm not leaving here until I talk to 10 people. And, uh, and I did. And, and, and here's why I, I did a text blitz. And I, and I just texted as many people on my list. And I would go through my phone and I, I'd text them. Hey, John, is this still your number? It's David. It's been forever. I want to catch up. There was no agenda. There was no like, obviously, what got me to reach out was the fact that I wanted new business partners. I wanted new customers, but I wasn't making that the, the end game. See, I was just trying to get to a woo, you know, which I learned, um, which I learned from one of my mentors, woo, right? Window of opportunity. I was just trying to find the woo in every conversation. And so I would send them a text blitz and, I, and out of every 20 people, 10 people would respond. And then five people I'd have a conversation with. And then I'd set up two calls. So I would have to text 20 people to set up two phone calls. So I knew I got to text like 
you know, I got to text like 30, 40, 50 people <clears throat> every day. And then maybe someone I texted three days ago, now they can talk today. They got a day off and now they're back from their vacation. And I would just get on the phone and talk. And when I would get on the phone, I would be the one asking questions. Most people think that the person talking the most is the one leading the conversation. That's not true. The person asking the questions is the one leading the conversation. So my prospecting consisted of looking for a window of opportunity to slide the product or the business into the conversation. And I would look for, um, look for the right questions that would get me there. I would be the expert. I, my questions got so good. Hey, how long have you been doing that? How, how's that job going? How's your wife? How's, how's everything working out? What do you like most about that? Wow, what, oh, wow. Are those long hours? What do you not like about that? Wow, is your body getting tore up from you know climbing on ladders all day? What you know, what do you like most about that? And I would ask such good questions so that by the by the time 10 minutes into the conversation, I've already they've been talking so much about themselves. It's like, oh, enough about me. Tell me about you. And then I'd lob it back into their court with even more questions. Dude, I'm phenomenal. I've made a big life change recently. Um, but but before I tell you about that man, how is your wife? I know she got sick there for a while. See what I mean? I would lob it back with even more questions. And, you know, Nikki, my, my, one of my other mentors, I have so many mentors. Um, Nikki taught me if, you know, people will find you interesting if you're interested in them. Right. And I just thought, oh my gosh, that's crazy because everyone loves talking about themselves. And you probably heard this before. Um, including myself, I'm no different, you know, but I found a way to ask the right questions. Some of you have heard Amber talked about form, you know, family, occupation, recreation, motivation, right? Like, how's your family? What do you, how's your job? What, what do you, what have you been doing for fun? You know, what, you know, what gets you up in the morning? What do you love most in your life? What's going on right now? But those kinds of topics get a conversation going. And eventually they're going to say, how the heck are you doing? And I came up with a, a way to kind of raise my, my, my level of enthusiasm in those conversations in such a way that it put me at, if I'm normally a seven or eight, it put me at like a 10. And it would be like, you know what? Um, life is good. Kids are good. You know, we're, we're, we're doing the thing. But man, what I'm really excited about is this new online business thing. I did the corporate thing for years and now I've got this online business thing. And it's blowing up, just having a blast. And it was like, that was it. Now, when someone says that to you, it's like, okay, well, dude, okay, this new online, what are you doing, right? The natural inclination is for people to want to know more. Like, what is that? Now, if somebody doesn't, they'll just say, hey, good luck with that. It's like a fork in the road in the conversation. And it's like, okay, good luck with that. Yeah, I've seen you posting on social media. I'm sure that'll work out for you. It can't be the reason why I called. And then if they say, if they go the other way and they go, this online business, tell me more. That's not my permission to verbal diarrhea all over them. Oh, well, I'm so glad you asked. All right, so there's this girl, Osma. Then we have liquid collagen and then the ATM. Have you heard about our system? And it's like, whoa, okay, hold on. Like at that point, I would give them a little bit more to chew on. Well, you know, we market products where help us make look, you know, look younger in our sleep. And we sell this liquid collagen. You wouldn't need it. I mean, this stuff is like magic for your joints and your skin and everybody wants to buy it. I mean, it's just an incredible business, but we just do it from our phones. I, I mean, I don't even like get dressed up every day and it's like, uh, okay. And, and again, they have another fork in the road and it's like, okay, well, oh, okay. Gotcha. That's what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. I, I know about that stuff. Okay. Good luck with that, right? Or wait a minute, <clears throat> hold the phones. You, you, collagen, what, what, what is this? What, what, tell me more. So guys, it's like, you gotta be able to get good at the skills of talking to people. You gotta know the magic catchphrases. One of my other mentors, Big Al Schreider, we've had him train on this team. He taught me these word combinations when I'm prospecting that were magical, such as everybody knows, everybody knows two paychecks are better than one. Everybody knows that, you know, using products to make you look younger while you sleep is better than using no products at all. Everybody knows, you know, taking care of your skin is important. Everybody knows having the right nutrition every day. Everybody knows gut health is leads to everything else. Everybody knows. So when you say everybody knows, people agree with you. 
or most people, phrases like most people, most people know that most people have additional revenue streams right now. You say that to somebody, and if they've only got one paycheck and most people have two, they're going, holy crud, I, I need to get on this, right? Most people have two income streams right now. Most people have more than one income stream. Most people drive their cars with insurance. Most people take good quality supplements to take care of their only body they have in life. Most people. And then he taught me the words, I'm just curious. You know, I'm just curious. You know, do you have multiple streams? I'm just curious. What do you take for your faith? What do you, what kind of college did you take? I'm just curious, right? And then he taught me the other combination. Could you do me a favor? Hey, could you do me a favor? And people think, oh, okay, the guy wants to borrow money. He wants to borrow my car. He wants me to take him to the airport at three in the morning. No, could you do me a favor? Hey, could you take a look at this little video? I, I respect you a lot. I want to know what you, if you like anything about this, what you like about it. Could you do me a favor? Hey, could you jump on this? you know, Zoom training. I'm, I'm trying to get all my friends together. I need a little support. It's my first one. Could you do me a favor and just, just be a fly on the wall? Could you do me a favor and accept the invite I just sent you to the College of Matrix? <clears throat> Could you do me a favor? It's like, oh, she doesn't want to borrow money. He doesn't want to borrow money. He just wants me to be in the Facebook group. I'm good. Using the magic words gets people in the mindset of agreeing with you, right? And then I learned this concept. So, so, that's, so that's really it. And then, you know, I started signing people up and getting people going. And I realized if I want to build a team, I want to build six figures. I have to use the systems. I have to use the tools, not be the tool. And I have to be able to plug in people into our Facebook groups and, 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 and their training and onboarding. There were all these little things that I'm like, okay, when somebody starts, you got to start them out right. When somebody gets started, you got to help them use the tools. And so when we talk about the tool conversation, that's probably one of the most important topics that you could possibly talk about is, well, what are the tools? And, and I'm going to cover that little section right here. And then both my modules will be done. I've got one little other section to cover. So when we talk about tools, there's really two questions you need to ask about tools. Number one, do you know what tools we have? I'm going to ask you that question. You want to make six figures? Do you know what tools we have? Do you know? Right? Amber just shared the tools map. I hope you screenshotted that. It's in the back office. Speaking of the back office, do you know all the tools that are in the back office? She also mentioned another big tool, buzz.shiftingretail.com. You want to lead a six-figure business? You want to be a leader and solve problems, not ask questions, be, be someone that answers questions? Buzz.shiftingretail.com probably answers 90% of any questions you'll get about any promotion or the trip or the promo or the event. Any question, buzz.shiftingretail.com. You know, you know how Google like makes you an expert on anything? Buzz.shiftingretail makes you an expert on Modair. How does movers work? Buzz. How does this promo? How how many trip? How many points do I need for the escape? Buzz. Just buzz, buzz, buzz. All right. What other tools? App, Modair Life app. Do you have the app? Are you using Pulse? Do you know what Pulse is? Do you know the tools? Do you know the tools? And then, so Facebook groups, social media, back office, project broadcast, texting tool, constant contact, email marketing tools. Do you know what tools are all available to you and you should be utilizing in your business? If not, why not? And then number two question, what tools do you like the most? What are your go-to tools? What's the video that you use for prospecting? What's the video you use? What's the... What's the video you use for trim? What's the video you use for liquid bio cell? What's the, what's the tool you use the most? Is it ATM? Is it, let me add you to the college of matrix. Let me tag them in that post by, you know, Suzette or Dr. Sherry, that video. <clears throat> what tool do you use the most and why? <clears throat> and then what's your DMO? What's your DMO? What's your daily method of operation? How many people are you going to talk to today? How many people are you going to text message today? Mine is 555 Add five friends a day, send five instant messengers a day, comment on five people's posts a day, right? And then I'm gonna, and then I can't even remember the rest. Five, you're gonna spend five, you're gonna spend five minutes going through your messenger and following up, right? And then two, 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 it's like talk to two people a day, text two people a day, you know, post on two social media platforms a day, post, do two reels a day, do two stories a day, do two posts a day, right? 
and then maybe do some personal development. What is your own DMO? There's a million DMOs. You can go in our Facebook group and put DMO in there. So these are the tools. Are you using the tools? You don't have to buy the tools. These tools are free. They're all included. Is your team using the tools? Does your team know about the tools? And then the last part on tools is system. And we did a whole training on systems like two weeks ago. You can go look it up. Just put systems in the subject line and watch that training. Systems stand for save yourself time, energy, and money. Leaders, the better the leader, the better the system. The more money the leader makes, the better their systems are. And we have just taken the best of the best from all the different teams, all the different leaders, and we put them into Freedom Legacy for you. The Shout app that, that uh, Amber mentioned is great. Don't know what to post on social media? Here's an app that texts you exactly word for word, script by script, line by line, picture by picture, exactly what to do to increase your social media engagement, right? That's the Shout app. It's all there in the guides. So use the system. Are you using the system? Does your team, what's your system? Everything in our business is systems. Onboarding is system. Got a new customer, that's a system. Prospecting is a system, ATM, right? <clears throat> customer, uh, customer engagement, that's a system. We've got a system for literally everything. And you can have your own system. You can use our system. Leaders have systems. They teach the systems and they duplicate the systems. And if you don't know what the system is, reach up, ask for that system. So the last thing I'm going to share is um, a little story. And, um, you know, my, my grandpa, I love my grandpa. And I, I still think about him all the time. Grandpa Floyd, Floyd James Simney. My dad has the same middle name, Gary James Simney. I have David James Simney. And I named my firstborn Heston, Heston James Simney. So my grandpa's middle name was James and all we have now four generations of James middle name. And I love my grandpa. I used to play cards with him and my grandpa used to take me fishing and uh, my dad would be working and my grandpa would take me out to the levee and fishing. <clears throat> and um, one of the, one of the fishing trips that we did was sturgeon fishing on the Sacramento river. Sturgeon is like a big prehistoric fish. It honestly looks like a monster. They're like six feet long. They're gigantic fish. They're gnarly. You have to use like 8,000 pound test on the reel. And when you go sturgeon fishing, it's an all night deal. You have to camp on the river. And the way they catch a sturgeon, they have these giant pieces of bait, but nobody fishes with just one pole. If you're a sturgeon fisher, you go out there with four or five poles and you put them like 20 feet apart all down the levee of the river. And you put all the poles and every pole has a bell on top of the fishing pole. And so I was at night, I was uh, probably, I don't know, six, five, six years old. And I remember it was a freezing night and I was in the tent and I woke up in the middle of the night, pitch black. And I hear ding, 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 ding. The bell's ringing and everybody's going crazy. One of those poles got a big sturgeon. And I remember my grandpa and my dad were holding the pole, trying to get the sturgeon in. And I thought, wow, you know, that's how you catch fish is you have more poles in the water. You guys, the tools, if you want to prospect, you got to have more tools in the water. You got to have more, more fish, you know, catching more fish can have more poles in the water, right? So what are your fishing poles in your business, <clears throat> right? Your curiosity post on social media, your reels, your TikTok, your Instagram, those are all fishing poles, right? Your, your text, your text messages, your text blitz, right? Going to, going to do your high school reunion. There's another tool. How about uh, being the, the, the team mom on your baseball team. Anywhere that you can get in front of people and build relationships, those are tools that you use to prospect. So ask yourself, how many tools do I have? How many fishing poles do I have in the water? And how can I get more out there? How can I get more out? There? It used to be in the old days, you'd place classified ads and do all this stuff. So that's it. Now, the last tip on prospecting I'm going to teach you is for people that already have teams. And You've probably heard us talk about taprooting. I'm going to cover it in like three minutes. And I just want you to understand the concept of taprooting because taprooting has literally been the secret to pretty much any success that I have had has been taprooting. And it has to do with building relationships and prospecting. So taprooting starts like this. So this is, this is you, right? This is your new business partner, all right? And your new business partner you know, she's, you know, she, she's awesome. She's gung-ho. She's on fire. She signs up two people. 
She signs up this person and this person. Now, normally what happens is most people, it stops there. So, so let's just say this is, this is your new person, right? And they sign up this person and that person. And most people only ever sign up two people. And, and maybe you get to know them and maybe you help them and that's it. And that's where you stop. That's what most people do. But she just signed up this third person. And the third person is the breakthrough, right? And let's say this person goes away, right? This person gets busy. There's a death in the family. This person's busy. If you didn't get to know this person right here, you would have never gotten all of these people. So the key to taprooting is to get to know the people that are in your business, figure out who the rock stars are, who's showing up, build those relationships, build the friendships. It doesn't mean that you hijack everyone on your team and try to be the leader. It's more like jumping in a three-way chat, being there to support, making sure they're tagged on stuff. And if something happens to the person that you brought in, right? Or even if, if something didn't happen, but maybe they're just cruising along, maybe they don't show up all the time. The fact that you've built a relationship and then you went down here to the third level and you built a relationship with this person. Hey, nice to meet you. Hey, great to know you, right? So for example, I mean, I have a million examples, but you know, uh, my wife met Amber, right? And then Amber brought in Laurel, right? Laurel and I are great friends. Heaven forbid Amber went, went somewhere else. I hope and pray that never happens. But if she did, Laurel would probably feel comfortable giving me a call and saying, hey, Dave, Amber's got something going on in her life. Or Amber, you know, unplugged for a few months. Or Amber's doing something else. Can I work with you? She'd feel good about that. And then Laurel's got Lori and, and, and Stephane and, and any of them would feel comfortable calling me up. Taprooting is not just about your own people that you sign up. It's about finding referrals in your business and, and finding the rock stars. Now, in the last year that my wife's been really building a huge business, the last two years, most of the people that we sign up are three, four, five levels in our business and they're referrals of new people <clears throat> that come in and we're signing up people. Most of our enrollments are not personal enrollments. So taprooting is all about referrals. Who do you know that would crush this business? And I'll just share this last analogy. Richard and Teresa Hollowell got me this hourglass uh, a long time ago at corporate. And it was the coolest gift ever. Isn't that cool? It's got black like lava sand in here. And it's an hourglass. So when somebody joins your business, this is their excitement level right here. The day they sign up, this is, this is their excitement level. Do you see what's happening? The more time that goes on, the sand is running out. It's slowly draining. If they don't get a paycheck in their first couple days or three days, if they don't get engagement on their first post, if they don't get a yes, if they don't get onboarded or encouraged or recognized, if they don't get something that gives them some confidence and build their belief. If they don't jump on a team training, if they don't come to the next event, see not everyone who is at the event makes 10 K a month, but everyone who makes 10 K a month is at the event. If you want your team to, to be on the call, you be on the call. A leader knows the way goes away, shows the way, right? So we're the lighthouse, not the weather vane. If we want a six figure business, we got to give them the confidence and the tools and the social media and the prospecting skills. We got to mentor them and be the person that they can lean on until they get the confidence to do it on their own. You can't leave your new social marketers out there floundering. You got to move in with them for the first month or two or three. And in some cases, six months or even a year or two until they can handle end a month on their own, until they can um, get their systems in place and onboard and have the skills they need to pay the bills. You guys, it's my hope and it's my prayer that all of you will use the tools, use your team, not, be, not try to do this by yourself. Have a daily method of operation with consistency that's going to give you the breakthrough that you're waiting for and that you know is just around the corner. 
you're only one person away, you guys, from a breakthrough. And that is my training. I'm going to kick it back to Amber to wrap us up with presenting some quick tips on presenting. And then we're going to make a couple big announcements. Amber, back to you, my friend. Let me just unmute and you get going. All right, guys. Thank you so much. That was awesome. I know we're, I appreciate you guys all staying here. So I'll try to be quick here I'll, as well. And I'm going to go, I made some slides because it helps me keep on track. Um, but it's real short. All right. So we're going to talk about um, presenting with posture, you know, how to tell stories, lives, reels, speaking with confidence, putting yourself out there, staying consistent, topics that engage and solving problems. So posture, David always used to talk about posture with me. Um, when I was new, I remember like learning about that. And, you know, Ray Higdon talks a lot about that as well. So sales posture is how you carry yourself. It includes your frame of mind, attitude, and deposition. To define sales posture and think the words below as being measured on a scale, you may think of yourself and how you think and act. Um, your sales posture can be measured by where you lie on the scale. So scarcity to abundance. Um, dishonesty, honesty, prideful humility, antagonistic empathy, indifferent curiosity, indirectness, directness, unbelievable, credible, restless, or calmness. So that's really how you're showing up. Um, and you, so you can assess how you feel and these type of things. Like think about, when I think about posture, I think about when someone says uh, something to you, like, is this an MLM, <laughs> right? Um, and you know, how do you respond? Like a new person is going to go, oh, uh, um, yeah, well, kind of, you know, <laughs> they're going to be all flustered by that. Um, a pro is going to be like, why do you ask that question? Right. Um, you're not going to go into defense mode. You're going to go into like curiosity mode. So that's just something you'll learn over time, but basically having posture to really have it has a lot to do with your confidence, you know, in what you're selling and what you're doing, you know, posture about pricing, like, oh, it's expensive. You know, a new person, I even I remember being like that at first, I would be nervous about the price, but as you grow and your confidence, the product, it's going to be more easy for you to have the posture of like $5 a day is totally worth it. This thing is the ultimate multitasker. You know, it does all of these things. So you'll, and you'll know because you have customers that have, I have customers have been on the product for six years and they pay it every month and they will never stop. So I know the price is worth it. So my confidence and my posture about the price is way up here, you know, versus where when I was maybe brand, brand new, it'd be like, ooh, I was used to paying $30 for collagen too, right? So um, learning to tell stories, do lives and reels. Um, I'm not gonna go huge into like how to tell stories. That's a whole nother training. I do have an entire training on this in my Facebook group. Um, if you guys want to watch it, it's really good. But you know, before and after stories, you're talking about before I used liquid biocell, I was this. And then I started to use this product and now I'm this. And that's a very simple story. Um, doing lives, if you're not there yet, you know, start with stories, start with your fate, you know, going to Instagram and doing these little quick clips where you're talking will help you start getting more comfortable on camera. I just, if you're super nervous to do lives, that's normal. I mean, my first lives were terrible. Like I went back and watched some of them and they're not good. No one starts off good at that. And just know that, um, it's okay. Like I, I remember my very first live, I said on my life, I am so nervous. This is very uncomfortable. And then everyone was like, don't be nervous, you're doing great, you know, and that helped me feel better. So it's okay to say it. It's okay to say, I'm not comfortable on camera. I'm trying to put myself out there. People actually appreciate that. Um, you could join in on others' lives. I know like Amy Kay, like she was nervous to do go lives and we did some um, groups. We did some lives in our Facebook group about liquid biocell and she came in and shared her story. So that's a little more comfortable maybe because you're with other people and you can get a little more comfortable on camera that way. So talk, uh, it helps to talk about something you already know about, something you don't have to research because that's gonna add an extra layer of discomfort if you don't feel fully confident what you're talking about. Um, you could go live in a smaller group or in our Facebook group, so to help you get more comfortable. Um, and you will get more confident as you do more. 
So it's always good to have good lighting you know, stand still. Like I know I used to do lives sometimes where I'd like walk around my house, my phone, that's very like makes people very nauseous. So try to sit still and, you know, put your camera and get it like a, get a, a light, you know, get a ring light where you have the cameras able to uh, prop that in there. So it's not moving around. And, um, I just heard this step recently. Imagine a mental period after each sentence, like in your head. So as you're speaking, and you're finishing up your sentence, you just stop and imagine this in your mind. And it'll give you an opportunity and it'll actually look more professional because really professional speakers slow down and they have a good pause and it allows you to kind of collect your thoughts. So just imagine that little period in your head after you finish a sentence. Um, think about only helping one person. So when I started doing lives, or even any post, it would just, if it was vulnerable, um, I would think if this just helps one person, then it's worth it. And that would just be my main focus of that live um, or of that post. Have a plan, take notes, use note cards. So whenever I'm doing a live, if you're not gonna remember, if you have like five tips on how to drink more water and you're alive and someone starts, their people are commenting and things like that. It can be very distracting. So you can choose not to respond to any comments. You can actually slide um, this, you can slide your live so you don't see the comments, but you can just not respond to them, it's okay. Um, but keep your notes in front of you. So if you kind of lose your train of thought, you have that right in front of you. And then the reels, um, I know we're short on time, so we're not gonna get huge into that, but. I hope you bought the Fraser Brooks document because that has a hundred reels. They're pretty simple. And literally they just tell you what to do. It's like today you're going to think of like eight things relating to your niche. So I just did one the other day of like eight things um, that help you look younger or whatever, you know, th any things make you feel younger, look younger. And I just went and like Googled a couple of things and made that. So you can, that is a great idea because it gives you a hundred reels to do and you gives you some ideas and you can just modify it. And then he does have a master class that he shows you like how to do the reels. So if you don't know how to do the reels, then I would buy that because then you're going to learn how to do it. I don't think it's super expensive. Um, I'm also doing some training in my Facebook group, which I'll show you guys. You can join that and I'm going to be rolling through like how to do the reels, how to put the words on it and things like that next week. Um, put, putting yourself out there. I know it's vulnerable, but I just promise you like like kind of what Lauren talked about, you know, she was in this place where people were snubbing her and like, oh my God, you're like this high end real estate. Now you're doing network marketing. Ew. Right. But it's like, and I was in the same boat when I was in pharmaceuticals, people were like, you know, they think they're so prestigious and it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're doing that. And guess what now? Like they, some of them follow me on Instagram and they're still working their job and I'm making more money than I did then. And I get to do whatever I want. And I'm pretty sure that they are, are a little jealous now, you know, so just know it's worth it. You know what you're the average person is, you know, doesn't have $400 in their bank account. If an emergency happens, the average person's paycheck to paycheck, you know, what does that look like? You are actually setting yourself apart from the average person. And that's a really good thing. And then finding topics that engage people, you know, again, kind of like I showed you earlier, when you look at like that Instagram thought leader that I give you some ideas, follow the people that are like in your similar niche that have a similar message to you and you can get content ideas that way. You can literally copy them. It's okay. You know, that's pretty socially acceptable now. Um, there's actually a repost app that you can use on Instagram to repost content. You're just supposed to give credit to them. And then you're just slowly going to be building yourself up. So just know this takes time to figure out but don't expect yourself to know all of it today. But um, as you go, like it took me years and years to figure all this stuff out, but I just was like, I'd ask a question myself, like, oh gosh, what do I post? And I would just rack my brain, like try to think of, I would Google things, you know, I'd get an idea. Like it kind of be whatever I was working on at the time. So like, I'm working on trying to drink more water. I'm just going to share that with, I need to get more sleep. I'm going to share that. What are you working on in your life? Just start talking about that. It's perfect. Um, don't assume everyone knows things that you're, you don't know. Like if you're learning, other people are going to learn from you as you go. So 
So look at other social marketers, what they're doing. Look at those Instagram thought leaders in your niche. Do reposting, copy the reels. And then there's a app, there's a website called Answer the Public that I, I've talked about a few times and um, Googling things. So Answer the Public, you can go in there and you can put up a, a topic. So it could be like collagen. You just put the word in there. You can only do one a day for free. Um, but it'll give you all the questions about collagen that people are like Googling and things like that. And so that'll give you an idea of like, oh, it gives you like a hundred, a list of like a hundred things. And then you could just use that as your content idea. It could be like belly fat or um, hormones, like any topic, this answer the public will give you all of these topic ideas. And you go on Pinterest too. Pinterest has topic ideas. So there's so many resources out there that's like done for you. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about like solving problems and not telling facts. So an example of that is fact, facts tell, stories sell. So facts won't sell. Like if you're sitting there talking about, oh, liquid bio cell has seven US and international patents, you know, the molecule is this, you know, it, it is this, um, that's just fact. Now, the problem it's solving, for example, with liquid biocell, you know, this is the ultimate multitasker. It stops aging in its tracks. It helps you do the things you love again. It helps you feel more confident in your own skin. You know, my hair is finally growing when nothing else works. Like I think about Rose Lily and she um, hurt her hip and she couldn't pick up her granddaughter anymore. So talking about how, oh, this reduces joint discomfort versus I can now pick up my granddaughter again. I can go and take a, a hike again like that is life right that is like that's engaging um facts about trim is like it's cla and collagen that's the ingredient right it's clinically proven but the problem itself is this actually oh my gosh i don't feel so hungry anymore so i'm eating less calories it helps me feel full you know shrinks those fat cells and so again that is what actually will help you to sell products when you talk in terms of like what it's doing instead of what it is and so there's my quick version. If you want to join my Facebook group, um, it's just go to like attractwithamber.com and I'll take you to my group here. And I'm doing the, so yeah, Reels training in there. And hand it back to David, so. Love it. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for hanging in with us. Amber, thank you for preparing all of that magic. Let's give it up for Amber and Lauren. What incredible talent we have on our team. This has been an incredible mastermind. We are not done yet. We're almost done. Thanks for hanging with us. Um, if we give away the money right now, everybody's going to leave, right? How about this? Let's give away the money and then we'll make the announcements. And if you leave after the money, then I'm not going to, I'm not going to pay. You. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. So we're going to do this again. We're going to pick a number from one to a hundred and we're giving away a hundred dollars cash. And then there'll be two runners up, which will be $25 <clears throat> Modair customer gift cards. Um, so again, it's a number between one and a hundred number be between one and a hundred. All right. And uh, let's, let's rock it. Everybody type it into the chat. If you're watching the Facebook feed, sorry, we're not monitoring it. Next time, jump on the Zooms. All right. That's, uh, that's one thing is when we do these trainings, we'd love to see you guys on the actual Zooms if you can. I know a lot of you guys are working, doing a lot of things. All right. We have some good guesses. Let's see who's close. Let's, ooh, somebody's one number away. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Last call. Last call. All right. Shoot. We have somebody that, uh, two people that put in the same number. All right. All right. All right. Okay, guys, here we go. The number was, last call, last call for number. The number was 29, 29. So we have a two-way tie between Rosalie and Suzette, two-way tie. So guys, uh, there's no other way to do this than you each get 50 bucks. So I hope you're happy with 50 bucks cash. Rosalie, um, you can send me um, your Venmo or PayPal. Suzette, send me your PayPal or Venmo and I'll give you each 50 bucks cash. Now for the gift card, Rachel is a winner on that. Ding, 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 ding. Rachel Latuka, come on in, come on in. Send me your mailing address. 
for a $25 gift card. And who else is close to the number 29? Uh, who else was close? Rachel and Brett might be in there. Let me see if anyone's, is anyone closer than Brett? Kayla. Ooh, Kayla is six away. Brett is, Brett is six away. What the H-E double freaking hockey sticks. I'm going to award both of you guys. So Brett, $25. Kayla, $25. Shoot me your mailing address. So we'll give away all of those. All right, guys, you guys rock. This has been so fun. Your teams need to be on this next time. All right, here's the announcements. Oh, should I do this? Should I do these announcements? All right, here we go, guys. Darren Hardy says, what's your next step? You're the X factor. The X factor, he does a whole training on this. The X factor is you. So will you do this? Will you build your skills? Will you make the time in your day to do this business? And what I want to challenge you all to do as a takeaway is what's your mission statement? What do you do? You know, do you help busy moms build an extra income online? Do you help people look younger and feel their best? Do you, what is your personal mission statement? Why are you doing this business? And I want you to just remember that every single day you wake up and you think, oh, life is happening. The kids are busy. This happened, this happened. If you make time for your Modere business every day, you will not regret it. So I want to challenge you every day, right? I even take off Sundays. I take off Sundays, but I still do something. I think about it. I think about my week. I think about my business. Every day, you've got to put time to water the seeds of your business. So I want to encourage you, if you take nothing else away, if you want a six-figure business, get really serious about it and double down on it. We've got the Mother's Day promotion that's going this weekend. We have a new flavor of trim raspberry lemonade coming out the 24th. We can start teasing out curiosity posts on trim right after the Mother's Day sale is gone. So a couple save the dates. Save the date. Number one, July 16th in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. We're having a Jusuru family reunion event. It's going to be super fun down in Florida um, Lauren and Barbara and Elaine Weiss are spearheading the effort. It's going to be, I think, at the um, Embassy Suites Hotel. And it's going to be a, a like a Friday night get together and a super Saturday training. And it's just going to be a family reunion. And we are just about to confirm a very special guest uh, who may or may not be the CEO of our company. She may or may not know about it. So it's not 100%. Um, but we were locking in the date and we're crossing our fingers. But either way, she's going to be joining us either way, either live or in person or not. So save the date if you can make it down to Palm Beach Gardens on July 16th. All right. So the big announcement is this. Um, I just got on a Zoom yesterday with Justin Prince. And I got to hang out with Justin last week out in St. George. Um, what the heck? I'm just going to tell you the story. Um, Justin moved down from Lehigh, Utah um, a couple of years ago. He moved down from St. George to take his family to St. George, uh, mainly probably because they were sick of the snow. Um, and he wanted to just raise his family down there. And he found at the top of his hill, he found a three acre lot to build his dream home. This 9,500 square foot dream home with 12,000, you know, crazy, crazy, crazy. So he buy this plot of land with views everywhere, backs up to the Bureau of Land Management. So nobody can build behind you. Nobody's on the side of you. It's just like 360 degrees of awesomeness. And they were going to build a house. And so he had to buy a, like this vacation house. These are big first world problems, but they lived in this smaller vacation house for like two years. And they were putting in the roads and putting in the utilities and putting all this stuff into their land. And it took forever. The city just was dragging their feet. And Justin got really impatient because they've been living in a real small house. And he, he holds all these retreats and does all this stuff. And he's like, I just want my dream home and I want it now. So about six months ago, he found, uh, maybe a year ago, but six months ago, he found his dream home um, that was already built and he bought it. So consequently, he was left with this little plot of land. And two Fridays ago, we were in St. George. We went to his house. We were in one of his little private masterminds, by the way. Those are $1,000 a 
for a weekend to be in this little private mastermind. They're only for his team and they're only for invite only. It's only like 30 people. And I mean, there's like hundreds of people lined up for this mastermind. And he invited my wife and I down um, just, just kind of as a fluke. And Friday night, and we go through this mastermind, great event, always learn a lot from Justin. And we find ourselves chit-chatting with him about St. George because we've been looking there for a few years. Lo and behold, long story short, he tells us he has a lot for sale. And we get in the car after an hour and a half with Justin Prince. We drive to the lot at one in the morning after having some Mexican food on a Friday night. And we drive our car up onto the lot and we look at the lights of all of St. George and we said, wow. And uh, we went back the next day and we made him an offer and he had two other offers and we bought Justin Prince's dream lot <laughs> in St. George. So we're gonna build a house on Justin Prince's land. <laughs> so um, it's now changing from Justin Prince to Dave Simney. So I'm super excited. Um, but I will say this, it's only because of Modair. It's only because of this team. It's only because of the dreams that we have every day. We wake up, we go, we, we make these goals and dreams that we think are just impossible, you know, of, 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 of going and doing things with our life and our family. And they are possible. They are possible. And we are in control of that. We're in control of that destiny. Um, so the actual annou announcement was not that I bought land. The announcement was um, we partner with Justin Prince and we're going to partner with our entire company on a very special, 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 special training with no, none other than John Maxwell. And this is going to be announced on June 1st. So I'm giving you a pre-announcement, um, which I don't know if I'm supposed to do or not, but we're doing it. So I want you to save the date. I'm going to promise you three things. I'm going to promise you three things. So first of all, John Maxwell is the most recognized and has written more books on leadership than anyone in the world. John Maxwell is 75 years old and will not be here forever. And number three, John Maxwell wrote one of the best books on leadership called The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, right? How many of you guys have read that book? 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And June 1st, we're going to announce a, a partnership with Justin Prince and John Maxwell and all of our entire, pretty much our entire company. And here's what I'm going to promise you. It's not going to be $5,000. It's not going to be $1,000. It's not going to be $500. It's not going to be $300. Okay. We're talking like 99 bucks. And it's going to be a series that we're all in with all the Modair leaders. And the end goal is going to be John Maxwell and this, this is very top secret, guys. If Justin is watching this right now, he's going to kill me. Actually, he's on a boat right now because he was going to be here. And then he's like, we're not announcing anything till June 1st. So I'm going to be in big trouble, pretty much. Someone's going to turn me in and wrap me out. I promise. It's going to happen. But I'm just saying it right now. Justin Prince and all of us getting this program, John Maxwell has promised if we get enough people to do this program with him, that he will speak at our next SRC convention. John Max will speak in person next March at our next social retail conference, which if you guys know, if you guys know John Maxwell is the best in the world. He trains presidents of countries and we'll get to see him in person, all right, at our event. Now, it's not 100%, we don't, we haven't, we don't know how many people are gonna do this training or whatever, but that's the end game. So this training, um, about the 21 laws of, of uh, irrefutable laws of leadership is this. It's going to equip you with the mindset and the skills and the modules, seven to 10 minute modules that will put you in the driver's seat, put you in the driver's seat, okay? Now I have the link, I'm already in the program. I can't give out the link until June 1st because if Justin Prince sees you know, 32 people from Freedom Legacy Team signing up with the link. Um, I'm definitely going to hear about it. But I want you to save the date, June 1st, John Maxwell, get the link. And we'll be posting it. We'll be streaming Justin's broadcast live in our group. I've never been so excited about anything personal development in years. And I'm the guy that spent $10,000 for like a GoPro training for a year. So to have a $100, and I think it's $119 if it, that includes the book with it, 
and the, the manual, the physical manual. So guys, I've never been so excited about anything in my life. And by the way, this will be something we can invite prospects to that aren't even in network marketing. We can invite realtors. We can invite friends to this. It's just a whole community we're going to build. So I just wanted to share that announcement because Justin has never been excited about anything like this. And I've never been this excited. So um, just set aside that little cash for June 1st and we'll do it. All right, guys. Oh, I have one more big announcement. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. One word. I, I hope I don't get in trouble. And I, and I hope that it actually happens. I think it's going to happen. One word, baby. Tria in June. Tria in June. Let's freaking go. If you don't know what Tria is, talk to talk to the person that shared Monair with you because Tria is coming back for a limited time for everybody. And it's going to be amazing. So with that, guys, um, I'm sorry we didn't have more time to like give you personal training, but here's what I'm going to say. Because we went over, if any of you want some personal one-on-one -on -one coaching, a little pep talk or anything, reach out, reach out to your teams. I'm an, I'm open. I got, you know, two, three hours today. I'm just chilling. You want to have a call, reach out to me personally. Um, those guys that won the gift cards, send me your PayPal and Venmo, or if it's the gift card, send me your mailing address. I'll get those in the mail on Monday. I want to thank all of you for committing the time and for being here on a Saturday. I know um, it's like, I know you have a choice when you fly Freedom Legacy Airlines. We thank you for choosing us. No, seriously. Thank you for being here and investing this time in your business. And I just got to say, I love you. Uh, Lauren, can you just close us out with just just, just your last final words um, of encouragement for all of us? And we'll say goodbye. Yeah, thanks, David and Amber. Amazing training, you guys. And I just want to say that, that, that there's always something really, there's always something right about any situation. So the five words I always ask myself when I'm struggling is what's, what is right about this? So if you find yourself in personal situation or business situation, ask yourself what's right about this and you'll find some really good answers to that question. So um, you guys, you've got everything you need inside of you. You've got all the support outside of you to be a six figure earner if you wanna be. And so just remember that, that we're here, we love you. And this is a family. Yeah, this is a family. So have an amazing weekend. Happy Mother's Day to all of you beautiful mamas. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. That's a that's a whole nother job. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you everybody for showing up. Thanks, Amber. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks, David. Thank you guys. You, David. This has been great. Thanks, guys. Bye -bye. This is awesome. Love you guys. Amber, thank you so much, to, everybody. We'll have to end the meeting. Amber. Hi. Uh, love you guys. Bye, thank guys. you. Love you. Bye. Love you guys. I feel like we're on the wall. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm kind of sad to know David won't be my neighbor anymore, but we better hang out before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> we get <to> five. <laughs> okay. Love you guys. You'll have to end it, though, Amber, because okay. I, I don't have controls. All right. Love you guys. Have a good weekend.